I spoke with Administrator Henderson. We both agreed you should all work together on this case. So where are we at? Oh, love it. This is NCIS's star, Rocky Carroll. He plays Leon Vance on the hit CBS series, but he also lends his talents behind the camera. And Rocky joins us now to talk about tonight's new episode. Welcome. It's so nice to have you here. Yeah, nice to be here. Good morning. Good morning. I, I love picking your brain uh, behind the scenes, too. It's like so fascinating to hear how it all works. Um, you've directed over 22 episodes. Also, not you're not just a star in front of the camera. Tell me about tonight's episode because you directed this one too. Tonight's episode, um, yes, I think when I hear, even when I hear it out loud, I've directed over 20 episodes. It's pretty amazing because it seems like only yesterday I directed my first one. Tonight's episode is titled In the Spotlight and uh, Special Agent Jessica Knight, who's played by Katrina Law, uh, makes a, a daring rescue. She, she sees a, she witnesses a car crash and she rescues a mother and son from a burning car. And of course, in the world that we live in now, somebody watching this and another bystander captures it all on a camera mm -hmm. phone. It goes viral. And now this NCIS agent is the subject of a viral video. She's trying to solve a murder case at the same time. Everybody's uh, pointing and looking at it because she's the subject of a viral video. That's a very real scenario. Yeah. We see that yeah. all the time. You joined in season five. You're now uh, you're a regular in season six. You stayed all this time. I mean, this is real yeah. staying power. What do you think fans, not only for your presence, but of the show in general, I mean, it's such a long running show. What do you think attracts fans uh, to it and gives it the staying power? I, you know, when I joined this, the show at the end of season five, last four episodes of season five, I literally said to myself, well, I came in on the tail end. At least I caught the tail end of the run of this series. If it goes seven seasons, at least I got like two seasons out of it. So, and that was uh, 15 years ago. So crazy, it, it, huh? it is crazy. I think there's something very, I, you know, I've made this analogy before. Back in the 60s, early days of television in the 60s and in the 70s, every network had westerns. CBS had Gunsmoke. There was the Big Valley. There was Bonanza. And there was something about that sort of frontier, simple justice, about somebody having an innate sense of right and wrong. There were good guys and there were bad guys. And at the end of the hour, the bad guys are brought to justice. And I think the procedurals, like NCIS, have sort of become the westerns of our new millennium. It's mm -hmm. like, so as, as murky as justice can be in the real world, at least you know on NCIS, at the end of the <laughs> yes. hour, bad guys are going to get brought to justice. And I think people respond to that. I know I do when I watch it. So it gives you that sense of that there is good and that good will, will win out in the end. I think that's a really good point. And I think also people are drawn to the characters. You know, they're invested in you and the other yeah. characters. I, I think that's what makes the difference between a show that lasts and a show that doesn't last. And, our, and the, the characters, you know, we, we try to infuse a lot of humor. Uh, there's, a, there's a great, uh, the inner office banner that happens between these characters. And then suddenly you realize they go out in the field and they're risking their lives. So you do, you get invested in the characters, in their personal lives, in their interpersonal relationships. My character came in as a, you know, as a new uh, director of the of NCIS, um, his wife has been killed in the in the in the process. There've been all sorts of things that have happened. So you you start to invest in these characters' lives. And we we talk about the storylines and the plots. Of course, that involves writers. This is a scripted show. We've been talking all day about uh, this potential strike by right. the writers. Um, you were around on the same show in 2007, the last time. Talk about your memories of that and how you're feeling going forward as the deadline looms. You know, it's. Um, it's kind of history sort of repeating itself. Yeah, you know, I think about it. I was I still uh, on, it, here in the cast, not directing on the cast of NCIS. And um, when that writer's strike happened, you were just sort of, there's just such an air of uncertainty. You don't know how long it's going to go. You don't know, you know, if, if eventually everything is going to shut down. Uh, especially for us doing scripted television, um, it has a huge effect on us. Right now, we're on hiatus. We come back to work in, usually in mid-July. Uh, the writers usually gear up er much earlier than that. So I'm hoping that this is not a long and protracted strike. I hope that, you know, things can, an agreement can be reached, but, you know, you, know, you never know. Yeah, and I'm sure you're very close with a lot of the writers. You've been working together Absolutely. for a long time. Absolutely. Well, we look forward to tonight's episode. We look forward to all the forthcoming episodes. Thank and we you. appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Thanks. Great to be here. Thank appreciate you. you being here. And you can watch NCIS tonight at 9 on CBS Los Angeles and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Let's go over now.